When we make an observation of matter, we either collect qualitative data or quantitative data. Qualitative data is observed instead of being measured by an instrument. And we can use our five senses to collect qualitative data. An example of qualitative data are colors, textures, smells, and the taste of substance. And here are the five senses, sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell. Unlike qualitative data, quantitative data is measured with a measuring instrument. When we look at the word quantitative, think of the word quantity. When we think of the word quantity, we think of number. So quantitative data is basically numerical data. Example of quantitative data are mass, volume, time, temperature, and length, and so much more. Now let's pay attention to this part. Each quantitative observation or data is called a measurement. So the word measurement describes a quantitative data. And each measurement has two parts, a number and a particular unit. What is a unit? A unit is an accepted standard that is used to measure a particular physical quantity. And what is physical quantity? A physical quantity is a physical properties and substance have properties that can be quantified, think of number, of course, or measure. Example of physical quantity or physical property that can be quantified or measured are length, mass, volume, and temperature of the substance. Now let's describe more about the unit. Each unit is standardized to represent a particular values. For example, both the unit feet and inches are unit used to measure distance of the substance. But one foot is longer than one inch. One foot is equal to 12 inches. As you can see, each unit represents a specific values even when they are used to measure the same physical quantity. Other examples of unit are liters and milliliter. Both units are used to measure volume of the substance. However, one liter is a lot more than one milliliter because one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliter. In the United States, the unit dollar and penny are both units of U.S. currency. However, the unit dollar is a lot more than the unit penny because one dollar is equal to 100 penny. And in chemistry, a unit will include a chemical formula to label the substance that is being measured because different substances have different physical properties. Here I have different measurements. Let's identify the part in the measurement. We have 35.1, that would be the number, gram, that would be the unit. 17 would be the number, this would be the unit. 37.1 gram NaCl, this number is the number part. And gram of NaCl, that would be the whole entire unit that has the chemical formula. So NaCl is the chemical formula. Then we have 3.02 times 10 to the 22 or 22nd power atoms of Na, which is sodium. So this whole entire thing right here, that would be a very large number, but it's still the number part of a measurement. Then atoms of NaCl, that would be the unit. Notice the term atom is a unit, and this would be part of the unit function as a chemical formula. Then we have 1.7 mole of H2O, dihydrogen monoxide. 1.7, that would be your number, and this more of H2O, that would be your unit. And the chemical formula is dihydrogen monoxide. Then we have 6.02 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of H2O. And this is your number. Okay. And this is your unit, which include a chemical formula, H2O, which is water. Let's look at some example. Here I have a cup of water, okay? And 
This water is basically purified water, and minerals have been added for taste. So this is where I get the water from. First of all, we can use our five senses to collect qualitative data, and one thing we notice that it is very clear, and it doesn't have any smell to it. And if I were to taste this, well, of course I'm not going to taste it. Uh, it would have some taste because the company promises that they add minerals for taste. Now, water, pure water itself, does not conduct electricity. I have a conductivity tester here. Let's see if there are a lot of minerals added in this water. If we look at the conductivity tester, if this light turn on, that tell you there are minerals in the water. And look at that. That tell you there are a lot of minerals added to this water. But in this case, we use a measuring instrument. Is this a qualitative data or a quantitative data? Does this instrument give us numerical data? And of course, the answer is no, it only give us the color indicator. So this is still a qualitative data. Now let's look at quantitative data. We can use a thermometer to measure the temperature of water. And the temperature is, as you can see there, it is 28.9 degrees Celsius. Because this water is now in a beaker, we can actually measure the volume of water. So I'm gonna use a marker to draw the meniscus level and if we look at the meniscus level, which is right here, we have 20 to 40. So each one of the increment is 10, so 20, 30. So that is about 37, 38, or 36 right there. So that would be the volumes of water. And we can use the scale to measure the mass of water. But first I had to pour the water out first. And I measure the beaker. And the beautiful part about this scale, it has a zero button. So I can remove the mass of the beaker. Now I pour the water in, all the water in, and this give us 31.9 grams of water. So this is another quantitative data or measurement. So again, this is a quantitative observation, which is also a measurement that has a number and a unit. G, which is gram. Let's look at another substance. I have a bar of copper. And qualitative data of this copper is that it has a copper color and the texture is very smooth. Of course, I'm not gonna taste this copper, okay? And what else? It doesn't have any, any smells to it. And in this case, we can actually measure the length of copper. And it's turned out to be 4.40 centimeter. And for the width or the height, because this is a square shape, it turned out to be 1.20 centimeter. And this piece of copper actually has a temperature on the surface as well, using this infrared thermometer. And the surface temperature of this copper is 30.8 degrees Celsius. And just like water, we can measure the mass of this bar of copper using a scale. And there we go, we have another quantitative observation, which is also a measurement of this bar of copper, 63.4. So by now, you should have a clear understanding of how unit or use in measurement to further quantify the number in a measurement. And a measurement is basically just a quantitative observation. So thank you for watching. Now, if you have any suggestion or comment about the video, please comment below so we can make learning more personalized for you. Thank you for watching.